Welcome to Stradio Lab, an intellectual podcast about straight culture. And also a stupid podcast about nothing. Don't say that. It's just true. I don't want to lie to our listeners. I'm George Severis. And I'm Sam Taggart. And, and this, this is Stradio Lab. Lab. Podcast, podcast starts, starts now. now. Hello. Hi. Knock, knock. Anybody on there? Um, hello. Is, I'm, I'm scared. Is anyone here or am I all alone? Hello? Hello? Is this working? Oh, no, Sam, you keep freezing. <laughs> that's not true. No, that's actually a callback because we're doing that time thing. That's right. We're doing a callback to something you haven't heard yet because guess what, sweetie pies? We are recording this intro after the episode you're about to hear was already recorded. We know everything that's about to happen, and we know you're going to eat it right out of the palm of our hands. Oh, you're going to be gobbling this shit up. You're going to be absolutely adoring each and every word. You're going to be crashing your car because you're going to be wondering what we're going to say next. There's going to be um, a Wall Street's going to collapse because they're going to be too busy laughing at our, our witty observations. It's going to be a bloodbath <laughs> because you are everyone will be gobble, gobble, gobbling up as though they're having Thanksgiving dinner while also drinking driving a car into the fearless girl statue on Wall Street. (laughs) It will be seen as a hate crime against all young girls, and we will be tried for war crimes in The Hague. All because you little idiots couldn't just listen to an episode without crashing your car. So you may be wondering, why are we doing that time thing? Um, Well, we're doing that time thing because uh, actually... The uh, the tables have turned, and my internet was very, very bad. Rail fans will remember, of course, the premiere, the season premiere of this season, which we, of course, celebrated with a red carpeted event that only micro influencers were invited to <laughs> and were not allowed to post about. Um, during that episode, I, in fact, was having internet issues, and we had to re record our intro with our dear friends, Matt and Bowen. And I said, I'm not going to be humiliated. Oh, no, no. I'm going to sabotage the Wi-Fi in Sam's, on Sam's block so that his Wi-Fi will not work for a future episode. <laughs> and honestly, that was such a learning experience because when your Wi-Fi wasn't working, I'll mm-hmm. admit it. I said, mm. this is George's fault. I said, exactly. George is doing something wrong. I <laughs> knew you were thinking that. And, when and my, can, I also admit, yeah. can I also admit something? I thought the same thing when it happened to you. <laughs> Even though I had had the experience, I knew what it was like to be in that situation. In that moment, I felt, how unprofessional. <laughs> to not have checked your Wi-Fi? I swear, I've never had an issue with it. And then that time, it of course decided not to work, which is a huge slay. But now it's actually better because we get to record the intro um, well after the fact. We This is actually what I like to call Mark Marining where you mm. you do the interview and then later in the intro talk about how good the interview is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, uh, you know, I almost did a Mark Maron uh, impression, but I actually, as I was starting it, thought, I don't know how to do this. Do you know, I um, when I first started stand-up, I used to do like a, an impression that was like Mark Maron, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> well, you got to do it. I'm sorry. I don't know. If I, I, it wasn't good. It was just sort of like raspy. Like uh, it was very early on, but. Um, yeah. God, what was it? Hello, what the fuck? No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, it was like, hey, what the fuckers? What the fucking ears? What the fuck, Nicks? What the fuck, noozles? What the fuck, snoozles? What the fuck, doozles? And what the fuck, snoozles? Like, <laughs> uh, um, take me back. I miss it. 1998. <laughs> the year. <laughs> were we ever so young? <laughs> were we ever so young? Oh, God. But. George, you actually have a huge development that you I want to talk about. I have a breaking news development. So everyone, please pull over so you don't crash into <laughs> the other Wall Street statue with the bull. You've already done enough damage, so please relax. Yeah, you've damaged Fearless Girl. And actually turn the volume down. Um, <laughs> so as you may remember, this at this point for you, listener, would be two episodes ago during the John Early episode, I mentioned that there are pigeons that are straight up having Studio 54-esque raves on top of my AC units. They are covering the AC units in shit, and they are making noise that is alarming on a daily basis, and it gets even worse at night, which is, you, you said it, not me, when I sleep. <laughs> and so I, I talked about that on the podcast, thinking this is going to go to deaf ears. You got you and John couldn't even, couldn't even hear the, the pigeon noises. I said... 
you know, this is a, a sort of a I'm I'm going through a beautiful mind type experience where I'm seeing um, that one guy that was in the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> <laughs> You're losing me, but keep going. Well, it's you know, listen, fans all of the, the film will know what I'm all, talking about. All okay. the references. So, but the issue is that so my friend Carrie, who happens to be a neighbor of mine, she lives two doors down, listened to the Shout episode. Out. Shout out. Listen to the episode and then texted Matthew and said, You'll never believe this. I know the culprit of your pigeon problem. Her landlord is such a pigeon lover that he spreads food for the pigeons multiple times a week. And now the entire block has a rampant pigeon problem. So much so that he replaced, he offered to replace for free multiple AC units in her building because they had been so absolutely covered and encased in pigeon shit. This is insane. Rather than offering to stop feeding the pigeons, he actually was like, listen, I'll take money out of my own pocket to replace everyone's AC units just so they can be covered in shit all again. This is Joker vibes. It's Joker vibes, and it's also toxic PETA behavior. I'm talking about people for the ethical treatment of animals. Oh, I, honey, is, I know who you're talking about. It's taken it. It's this is this is a slippery slope of like, you can be too good of a person. Well, yeah, like the pigeons shouldn't be thriving. They should be sure yeah. they can live, but they shouldn't be having full on orgies exactly. on your AC unit. And I'm not. I want everyone to know. I'm not actually exaggerating it does appear that they are having intercourse one time we thought i swear to god one time we thought one of them had passed away which was very sad turns out literally it was napping we knocked on the window and it was like oh sorry it's just taking a nap and then started flying oh napping god. on the ac and so it is but but as you said you know you don't want to i i'm i would never murder a pigeon i would never harm a pigeon but that doesn't mean i'm gonna gift it food no, I mean, I wouldn't harm a pigeon, but if somebody else did, I wouldn't stop them. No, Sam, stop it. No, I mean, if there was some big, strong killer out there right. hunting all the pigeons in the building, oh, what, what am I going to do? Take him down? No, I might maybe give him, offer him water because he needs wow. to live too. Well, yes. I mean, it's hard work if you can get it. It's good hard. work if you can get it. It's, it's hard work if you can get it. That's and, me about and, podcasting. And a hard day's work. And a hard day's work is good. And a work. hard day's work. It's good. And a hard day's work is good work, but only if you can get it. But but here's the thing, though. I actually don't, you don't need to harm the pigeon because what's beautiful about this gorgeous ecosystem we live in, called yes, the island of Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, is that. There is a natural balance to things. You don't actually need to harm the pigeons. They will generally stay out of your way. If you just did nothing, they would not be having orgies on my AC unit. They would just be like occasionally visiting and then leaving. Well, and you bring up a really important fact, which is kind of a tenant of my life. And mm. I felt this way about a lot of topics. And I feel I continue to feel this way about a lot of topics. The correct way to feel is always neutral. If you feel neither positive nor negative about the pigeons, everything will be fine. It's yes. when you love the pigeons, it fucks everything up. When you hate the pigeons, it fucks everything up. If you just yeah. let them be, mm -hmm. life finds a way. And the pigeons, some will die and some will live. And that is perfect. The perfect amount of pigeons is some dying and some living. 100%. I could not agree more. And I would go so far as to say, you know... <laughs> You should basically be centrist in everything except politics. <laughs> That's true. And I have to say, I have taken the opposite approach to the rats in my backyard for, the, for an update for the listeners. <laughs> I'm bringing this back. And we actually back. cannot go into that because when you, when we did go into it in the original intro, it bummed me out and we can't. <laughs> and I do feel like it might bump some listeners out. But let's yeah. just say no one is safe. <laughs> The rats are not thriving. Let's just say that. They're not thriving. You they're, are. Um, they're um, sort of looking to move out of the city, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they're being forceful or removed. No, they're looking, they're thinking about, you know, uh, Philadelphia. Let's just say that. Yeah, they're being priced out of Bushwick, <laughs> like many of us will be eventually. They're being chemically priced out. They're being... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what I would love is a is a kind of um, Frost Nixon style debate between you and then the pigeon guy on my block that actually is <laughs> living for the pigeons and and wants to actually breed them so that they take over the city. <laughs> yeah, I mean the worst part of that is like he would win. Like I'm just right. I get so flustered in a debate setting, like a true debate setting. I get upset. 
You do. Whereas yeah. I'll say it, I thrive in a debate. Setting. Oh, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not trying to literally attack you. But one of the most toxic personalities is like, I love a good spirited debate. I know. Well, <laughs> it's because I did debate in high school. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And can I tell you something? You know, I, of course, was perceptive enough to get out. And I was like, I mm. I know this is toxic. And I know that if I if I follow this road, I will become Pete Buttigieg. I knew that in my heart. And so that's why I got out and became an alt writer performer. Yeah. However, that stays with you. It's like how people that, you know, were raised Catholic still have that Catholic guilt, even though they are now, you know, actually receiving multiple loads a day. <laughs> I kind of feel that way with the religion of high school debate where like, yes, I have moved on technically, but I haven't done the internal. I haven't decolonized from within. No. Well, because high school debate is trauma and say that. <laughs> and so you're walking around dripping in trauma and mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to do a lot of work. And because of capitalism, you have to work a job. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have the yeah. time to do it. I mean, capitalism kind of makes high school debaters out of all of us. <laughs> or worse. Or uh, worse. Yeah. Or worse, rat killers. <laughs> <laughs> there is something, honestly, if, yeah. There actually is something to it. Like if it was like if I didn't have to work, I would not necessarily care so much that the rats were thriving in my backyard. But it's like I have a job. Like, right. Well, it's a dog eat dog <laughs> world. And you feel actually in the economy like you're competing with the rats. I but because I am. Because I yeah. am. Because you are. Because you are. I mean, who knows what they'll come for next? I mean, the we are days away from a rat getting on Vulture's comics to watch list. Oh my days away. I mean, <laughs> honey, one could argue it's already happened. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, should we start the app now? I think we should. We should start the app. I think this is such a flawless, impeccable intro. I mean, this app and I'll say this to Hannah's credit, you know, we kind of restarted the intro a few times. We were having Wi-Fi issues, whatever. And I was so afraid that she would lose that podcast guest spark, that she mm -hmm. she came in with all this goodwill and would be like, who the hell do you these guys think they are making me start over again? But I actually think it made her stronger as a guest. I think she got to tap into a sort of a caring side because yes. she saw me struggling and she decided to help. And she really was helpful. She is the mother we never had. <laughs> She is the sister anyone would want. She and is, she the, is the daughter of the daughter of the United States of, of America. States. And so give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for the first daughter of the United <laughs> States of America. From HBO Max's Hacks, I would like to welcome Mrs. Woo. She just got married. <laughs> Hannah Einbinder. I married someone in my own family. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, that's, congratulations. Yes, Mrs. Einbinder. That's me. Yeah, you know, that's, that's frowned upon here in Holly Weird. But yeah. you said, I don't do things your way. Look, representation matters. And I'm really here to <laughs> sort of fight the good fight, even when it's not popular. Yeah, I mean, love love really is love. Yeah. And your husband slash son right? is such a good guy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, you raised him right. <laughs> you did. <laughs> that is, though, can I, if I can just say that is straight culture for women to be like, my yeah. husband's also my son. That's <laughs> yeah. true. That's true. It's like you're so afraid of chosen family that even your biological family, you got to keep it in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um. So what's up? I'm chilling. Um, I yeah. wanted to say something about um, canceling in general because I know you guys are talking about that in the intro. I just want to say, like, I have never begrudged anyone for canceling, for being late. Like, there's no element of any feeling, negative feeling for me if someone is, like, literally an hour late, like, yeah. truly, like, canceling. Like, for me, I think it's, like, a very, because I'm ADHD girl and I am oh, I set my alarm for 12 p.m., not 12 a.m., and oh, I put this in my calendar wrong, and like, oh, you know, I'm spiraling, and so I can't make it. Like, I have so much respect for people who cancel and are late. Yeah. And can I say something else about canceling? It's easy. Bring a book. Yeah. If you're afraid someone will cancel or, or not canceling, but like be late, just bring a book. Suddenly you have suddenly you are consuming culture. You are actually being you're actually quite frankly, and I say this about some of my best friends, 
probably having a better experience and talking to, to, to some of them, you know, if you're just reading a, a critically acclaimed novel. And say that. I, I think you guys that. are both being so toxic, so inconsiderate. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, you know, I think there's a window of acceptability when it comes to lateness. And then I Fair. think mm -hmm. if you're rolling sure. up a half hour late, there better be a damn good reason. Sure. You know, damn good reason. And what I'll say is just I only speak for myself. You can be late on me. I'm not going to necessarily do that on you. But if you were late on me, I would say, take your time. Stop for coffee. Like, I don't want you to have any stress in your life because I've been late and I have canceled and I felt that stress and I don't want it for you. Yeah. You know, if people talk about the other kind of cancel culture, I would argue this kind is more toxic. <laughs> like the, the unwritten rules around canceling, not canceling. How, how how early do you want to tell someone you're going to cancel being late? I would say there's something there. Yeah, I think you're right. I also want to just say that I was I caught myself listening to you guys like during the intro and being like, oh, I'm listening to a podcast. And at first I was like smiling because like obviously you can't see my face. And I was like, you know, like being an audience member. And then I like dipped out and just kind of like, like dead eyes. Like I felt like I was truly <laughs> listening to a podcast, which technically yeah. I was, but live, right. it's very exciting. I was really into it. Well, we always like crave the guests approval while yeah. we are talking at the beginning in a way that is like truly very childish. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, so if, in case we do a new intro, um, we were having technical difficulties, of course, and yeah. you were blank faced. And I was like, oh, she, she hates, hates it. That's <laughs> well, here's actually... what I'll say. You know, if we do record a new intro, we will send it to you, Hannah. And then we would like you to record a video of your reactions <laughs> to what we're saying. Um, just because otherwise we, we won't feel 100% 100%. safe and ready to, to, to release the app. And I will do that. And I will say that I'm feeling close to you because the reason I brought that up is because I'm the same way. And I would obviously be looking to, to the two yeah. of you where it, I, yeah. the, where the tables turned. Um, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to clarify that my dead eyes was actually captivation. I thought I was in my home going about my day, listening to my two friends who make me feel less alone. And that's. That's what that was. Oh, Hannah. Well, you know, mm. I mean, that's the thing with um, podcasting is that really the best case scenario is someone actually dissociating while listening <laughs> yeah. to it. Like, it's they're really it's not like, you know, you're on a stage and you want the audience to be clapping and laughing. Actually, what you want is to just seamlessly integrate yourself into that person chopping up carrots and yes. trying to forget about their pathetic life. Correct. <laughs> Hannah, I have a question. Do you consider yourself on a daily basis more of a podcast guest or a podcast host? Thank you for asking. Um, oh, my God. You know, I have to just be honest and say guest. Um, I mm. think it would be a better thing to be a host. But the reality is that I, I think I am at this point in my life a guest. Wow. You know, it's interesting. I You would think that considering yourself a host would be more kind of main character syndrome. But in my mind, Guess and I'm not definitely. saying this as, a, as an insult to you, of course, um, but in my mind, I'm like, OK, being a guest is more main character syndrome because yes. you're like, I'm I'm the one being interviewed. Correct. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I and I and I say that because host would be something I would aspire to. But sure. the reality, mm. unfortunately, is that I am a guest. Yeah. I think we're really starting to f pinpoint something. I think as a host, I, I'm starting to feel almost a custodial energy. <laughs> I feel almost like I, I sweep the stage. I'm, yeah. I'm sort of like, um, you know, putting flowers on the table and, and, and I'm like setting the space for, for, for others. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like, yes, I'm also there. I'm also being like, ha 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 ha. But it's still more of a, it's like, this is my home. Like, yeah, could you not could you not put your feet there? Like I'm I'm sort mm -hmm. of like there are rules and mm -hmm. it's um you know, I miss that sort of free flowing in oh in my early twenties I was such a guest. <laughs> you would have died. I was such a guest. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I think there's dignity in hosting and mm -hmm. like a really like a Say level that. of respect that goes with hosting. And I think like unfortunately I am twenty seven and so I am in my guest era. Um, but mm. I can only hope cherish it, Hannah. Cherish yeah. it. <laughs> okay, I will. I was because going as to. soon as you hit that thirty mark, you're right. gonna get a podcast deal. <laughs> oh no, it's coming. I can feel it. Ooh. You're gonna get that call, and you're gonna say, "Where do I sign?" I am not youthful anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they want me to host me. <laughs> 
know. Yeah. I'm ready. Uh, yeah. It is, I would say, you know, podcasting specifically, it's not just that you're hosting someone. It's actually because that other person is the main event, it's almost like you are hosting them, but in their house. It's like you get to their house and you have 30 minutes to get ready to play act hosting them in their own house. <laughs> wow. 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 And in that way, you know, it's that liminal space of like, you never feel at home. Mm. <laughs> Shit. Wow. That's then I really think I may and that's be something a host. And that's something, by the way, we have to go through every week. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And the only respite, the only respite we have is reading ad reads for nuts.com. And that's if we're lucky. <laughs> George, I don't think I ever realized how you just get, like that was a real window into how traumatic podcasting is for you. Mm. You know, and I love it, and I love it, and it's <laughs> and it's my one, it's my one skill. I've actually been banned from all performing venues, and they said we only want to see you on a Zoom window, and so it really is is tough. <laughs> but you know, there's like, do you ever get the anxiety in the hosting position? Because I've only done it once. We did a a, a sort of small capsule. A limited capsule of the of like the hack season two podcast mm -hmm. and they had me host one of the episodes talking to paul lucia and jen and it was like i had this moment of and i don't know if this is just like being an overthinker but it was like i'm starting to ask a question and then midway through the question i'm realizing that everyone's looking at me and then i'm yeah. getting distracted from the fact that i'm asking a question and i'm thinking about the fact that i'm distracted and then i am thus taken out of the question i am asking and then i am starting <laughs> to panic because we're recording and they're looking mm -hmm. straight at me and yeah. then it's just this like insane spiral um and that is part of the hosting element that i i fear and i have trouble with and i wonder if you experience that uh, 100 i mean the worst thing you can find yourself doing is in the middle of asking a question starting a new clause because you're second guessing yourself like mm. if i wanted to ask you you know where's your shirt from i'd be like so where is your because i noticed the collar you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean oh, wow. it's it's just like Oof. and then you're like oh no well what am i going to do now i guess i have to finish that thought before i get back to the main thought but by that time it won't be a complete sentence anymore mm. and now now I'm actually thinking about myself more than I'm thinking about the person that I'm talking to. You just painted it's like fucked. the saddest yeah. picture I've ever seen. I know. That is I know. so, I have been in that, I've been there and yeah. I felt that pain and to capture it like that, I'm, I think you broke new ground. Yeah. Well, you know, as past guest Theta Hamill told us, we tell ourselves stories in order to live. She coined that phrase. So true. <laughs> so fucking true. <laughs> Literally. And I think ever since I heard that, it's really been a game changer for me. The definition of life yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, should we do our first segment? I think there would be nothing that would make me horny in a safe and ethical way more than doing our first segment love that oh wow incredible hannah our first segment this is of course a podcast ostensibly about straight culture sometimes and our <laughs> first segment is called straight shooters and in this segment we ask you a series of rapid fire nonsensical questions to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture and you have to choose simply between one thing or another thing and the one rule is you can't ask any follow-up questions about how the game works copy that Sam, take it away. Okay. Christianity <laughs> or Miss Congeniality? Christianity for sure. Mm. The sound of music or the taste of a Cobb salad hold the bacon dressing on the side? <laughs> taste of a Cobb salad hold the bacon dressing on the side. Mm -hmm. Username taken or being forsaken? Username taken. Mm hmm. Being a successful businessman, but never having read a book in your life, or being a sophisticated urbanite artist, but not being able to locate Ukraine on a map? Mm. Being a successful businessman, yeah. but never having read a book in your life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, huge. <laughs> Fighting to the death, or kissing, then having sex? <laughs> I would say fighting to the death. Mm. Okay, Hannah. Traveling upstate to see the fall foliage or taking an extra shift at work so you can pay off your mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> um, taking an extra shift at work so you can pay off your mortgage. <laughs> um, okay. Fish and chips, chips and dips, 
or piss and shits. Ooh. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that? <laughs> Fish and chips, chips and dips, or shits and piss. God, Sam, your connection is just tough right now. If you wouldn't Sam, mind. Sam, actually, could you repeat that a few more times? Just once more. We couldn't. Is it really not it. working? No, it's, no it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go ahead and fit with, say, and fish and chips, Sam. Mm. <laughs> wow. That's not what I expected, but I respect it. Yeah, I, I, that's not what I expected. But you know what, though? It's actually more subversive for you to pick fish and chips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing actually, you're doing like one of the rules of comedy that's like leading us to think you're going to choose shit and piss and then choosing chips. What is it? <laughs> fish, <laughs> fish and chips. <laughs> anyway, Hannah, your final question is, the cat's meow or Jake Gyllenhaal? Ow, ow. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, Stupid. It's got to be Jake Gyllenhaal. Ow, ow. <laughs> wow. wow. And, you know, Incredible. I'll just say, you know, we rate our guest performance on a scale of zero to 1,000 doves. <laughs> and I'm willing to go there and say, actually, the, the bait and switch you did with fish and chips earned you 1,000 doves. <gasps> Yeah, I think you got a thousand does. And I also, I think what I was appreciating throughout your play of that game was the business mindset. I so could much. see that you had the billionaire mindset and you were ready to trade, sell, you know, invest. You, I, yeah. I could see it all math lady meme, but with business terms flying around your head. It, you know, you have an S Corp and an LLC <laughs> and you know when to use each credit card. And you guessed it. I am setting up a 503, 504, C354. Ooh. Ooh. So. Damn, I have got to get me one of those yes. and you know i've heard that's the most unethical one you can do you better believe it and that's why i'm doing it it's the opposite of a non-profit you actually take money from the poor yes yes that's that billionaire mindset that's what you were that's that billionaire mindset and that's what i'm doing that is so huge god so george what are you investing in these days you know what there's a, you know what i'm investing in <laughs> you know what i'm investing in this conversation because i am jonesing to find out what the topic is for the day Ooh. Love that. Okay, genius vibes. Okay. So, Hannah, so... I want you, in your own words, of course, I would not ever ask you to do something in someone else's words that would be deeply problematic. Acting, lying. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and say, no, acting is problematic. It's lying. Yeah. It's literally yeah, the it's definition lying. of lying. Like, you're lying about, like, who you are. Your like, name? It's where you t- live? <laughs> what year you're yeah. from? Okay. That's crazy. Like, as an out and proud gay man, I could never do that. (laughs) Don't. Don't. Really, yeah. So, Hannah, I know that, you know, you've been in the past rewarded for acting. Sure. And it is a skill you're actually very good at. We need you to put that aside. Okay, okay. Okay. (laughs) And actually, for once, be yourself. (laughs) Okay, okay. Okay. And explain to me and to my dear co-host, Sam, what your topic is for the day. My topic is... Trying to make connections at a hotel. Mm-hmm. I'm going to mm-hmm. go ahead and expand on that. So Please. yeah, this topic is inspired by something that has happened to me before. I recently stayed at a boutique hotel in Palm Springs. Um, one of those thir- only 30 rooms and it's very chic and garden like and very chill. 21 and up. No kids allowed vibes. Mm. And I, with my boyfriend, Alex Edelman, have Plug. Shout out. gone, shout out to him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, great comic. Great comic. <laughs> we have gone two times and both times we've gone, there has been the same other couple there. Now, I just want to say that these people are perfectly wonderful and I wish them no ill will and God bless them. And I want to just drive that point home. But the attempt to socialize and to maybe foster a double date and it's not creepy and it's not like they're not like doing anything sketchy. It's, it, it is a pure intention and I can't stress that enough, but just the idea of like a straight double date or like, you know, Mm -hmm. the guy talking to Alex and the woman talking to me, like everything about that for me is just an area of straightness that really makes me want to go back to the room. 
Yeah. Mm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Go back in the closet, so to speak. Sure. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, go, go, go out, go so out of the closet that I'm no longer even dating that <laughs> vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it's so traumatic that you might actually your relationship might dissolve on the spot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just that thing of like, yeah, no, we have a, we have an all, we have a, we have a, a, a year past to hunting the gardens. Yeah, no, definitely. We, you know what? I'll yeah. DM you. Let me get your info. Let me get your, Ooh. you know. I mean, mm. that'll make anyone want to be a lesbian separatist. <laughs> <laughs> lesbian separatist. Wow. If my Instagram handle wasn't already Hannah Einbinder, that would be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> You know, I think what you're describing is also it's like a form of cor- it's like a form of non-romantic, non-sexual courtship. Mm-hmm. It's like the most platonic possible where you're like, OK, we're doing this. But to what end? Yes. Yes. Well, and I think the straightest part about it is the lack of end. Like mm-hmm. if I was at a gay resort, mm-hmm. 21 plus, no kids, mm-hmm. and another couple came up to us and was like, yeah. hey, we should get dinner. I'd be like, yes. OK, they're trying to hook up. Yeah, and it right. would be like so that at least I know what your intention is, and I, and I appreciate and respect this courtship, yes. and it's kind of fun. Yeah, at least have the decency to want to have sex with me. Correct, <laughs> and ultimately that is what I'm saying. And yeah, you know, I I think that's you, they, Sam, you hit the nail right on the head. There is something about it that is just, I mean, I, I would almost rather them be trying to do that and then it would be like oh no thank you thanks but no thanks and then it would be sort of it would be done Mm, right Mm -hmm. you know right you're like let's get this uh, let's get the orgy part over with yeah (laughs) and then maybe we can talk about your timeshare exactly (laughs) exactly it's just there is never a moment where i am so overwhelmed by straight culture than in that moment yeah you're bringing up an interesting angle that I feel like is not brought up much on this podcast, which is when the straightness is hurled onto someone mm-hmm. where it's like in that situation, you are the woman. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. And <laughs> yes. you have to play that part. And it's like rarely like when you're with your normal friends, that's not so much the case. No. But a stranger couple, it's like my role here is woman. Right. And that his role is man. Yeah. They're talking <laughs> yeah. about what year like these trees were planted and she's asking me where my swimsuit's from. And it's like right. that's the two genders, you know? It's like <laughs> when you're with yeah, when you're with close friends, gender doesn't exist. When you're with strangers, you're in a box. It's a binary experience. <laughs> it yeah. really is. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to do with you. They look at you and they say, I will literally scream until she tells me what exactly her gender is. Otherwise, I will yeah. actually pull a fire alarm and make everyone leave this boutique hotel. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's and it's just like, you know, I think like there's something about like the strangerness of of straightness, like there is at least a common bond were that to be happening with queer people. Yes. Um, the strangerness of like, and this has happened with like multiple couples. Like it's almost something that happens often in a situation like this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's, it's just like, oh yeah. Like it's just, it never goes beyond small talk. That's the yeah. thing. That's the mm. problem. I feel like if I were in a situation and it was more queer, like it would go far beyond small talk because there is that sort of common experience. But that's just like sort of, um, you know, it's fish and chips in a word. It's it's 100 percent fish and (laughs) chips. It's fish and chips. You know, I think you're pointing to something actually incredibly fruitful, which is straight. Straight people have not landed on a definition for intimacy, not and I don't mean romantic or sexual intimacy. I mean, like, when do you know that you have hit a that you have like surpassed some kind of boundary when making small talk with a straight person Mm -hmm. no never in fact you might think this you might be like oh god small talk again blah blah and then you realize for them this is the most interesting conversation they've had in their life completely completely (laughs) completely damn what an attack (laughs) (laughs) recently i was at a gay swimming hole And then I was like in the town that's like near the gay swimming hole and this 70 
71, he told me his age, a 71 year old man. My window was up. I was in a car and he was like pointing and he was like, were you at the swimming hole? And I, he wasn't there, but he just saw someone that looked gay. And then he started to talk with me. Um, he, I mean, there was no option. He was talking at me. And uh, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, so he does want to hook up. But this also could be maybe for him, this is that version of straight small talk because he also mm. was like, you should come to dinner with us. Oh, I have a, oh, do you know this man? He has a cabin down the, down the street. Oh, do you know this man? And I was, mm. and then he, a car goes by and he's like, you know, that car is worth $20,000 million, 20, or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and so it was sort of like, you don't think we're going to have sex, but this is, this is somewhere in between. Sure. This is like the other side of the coin where with gay and you know, uh, in various queer uh, spaces, it's almost the problem becomes the other thing where sometimes you're like, actually, I do just want to make small talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then that seems impossible. Yeah. God. Yeah. Immediately when he started talking, I was like, he wants to have sex so bad. Like, I was like, I can't go to dinner because then I will have agreed to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, I can't go to dinner because then I will agree to go to the Huntington Gardens with Right, exactly. Yes, which is the straight version of sex. Correct. I mean, isn't that literally a Sex in the City joke where it's like, honey, we're 35. Like, sex is real estate now or whatever. Oh, right. Sure, right? Sure, sure, yeah, sure, totally. Sure. Nothing gets me true. off more than a good Zillow listing. <laughs> <laughs> Price cut. Ooh, yeah. It's like. Yeah. Orgasm to me, it's called being mean to my maid. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. Love those ladies, but never say anything bad about them. Isn't it so tragic that, like, the best parts of human relationships are in those vague areas? I mean, the best parts of life are undefinable, but also so are the worst. Mm. <laughs> like sometimes okay, you just want to, from the, from the beginning of a conversation, sometimes you do just want to be like, can we set some ground rules here? Yeah. But then suddenly you're becoming camp counselor. You're becoming, uh, you know, someone who can't just live. You're becoming, um, you know, mm. person who talks about being introverted on Twitter. Sure. Mm. I, I think that, you know, there's something about like drugs that, can break down a lot of these things yeah um that i appreciate like whether that's an experience that you have sort of on your own that mm -hmm. then alters your point of view like it is so rare to meet someone who is so truly and 100 percent open and it if you're not, especially if you're, you know, mingling with, you know, mid 30 to early 40s, you know, people at a whatever, like you are just kind of all in an elevator, you know, like elevator wow. etiquette is, is what I see from this, where it's just like, you know, there is that desire coming from them, right, to connect, but it just can't go because the floor is coming, you know, there's like, Hannah, the end inside. You're, this is genius. I mean, I, mm -hmm. straight culture is an elevator. And it's not going anywhere. It's really <laughs> like, there's no Yeah, it's the elevator from Willy Wonka. Like, yeah, it's bursting through the ceiling. And yeah. it's going to infinity and beyond. And really, there's no way to get off. Right. And, and it's the elevator from Willy Wonka, but without any of the kind of fun aesthetic flourishes Correct. of the Johnny Depp movie. Correct. Not to bring him into this, because we don't have time. It but. would be it would be the elevator from a bank. But from a bank, yeah. yeah. From, from a bank. bank. It's the bank yeah. elevator. Yeah. It's the bank. It's Chase Bank. It's it's specifically <laughs> Chase Bank elevator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I also think at a hotel is specific too, because hotels do have a inherently sexual energy. Sure. Especially a boutique one. Sure. So is that only me? Do only I feel? No, that? it's not only you. It's just very char. <laughs> it's just like this is your go-to. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it would be you. It's like when we were talking about airports, and you were like, airports do have a sexual vibe. <laughs> <laughs> they just do. Or, <laughs> when we were talking about like, I one time at one of our live shows, we were talking about whether or not it's straight to talk about vacation plans at work, which to me is the straightest possible thing. It's yeah. literally being like, well, you know, me and uh, Alice and the kids have got a place in the Hamptons, blah, blah, blah. And Sam's yeah. like, no, that's gay because it's like gay people talking to one another about going on vacation. I'm like, no, they're not gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're staying at the Legoland Hotel. 
<laughs> no, I am completely in a bubble and I can't get out of it. There's well, I don't really want to, but <laughs> it's so it's so funny. But I I understand what you're saying. I mean, I understand like Hotels the are. world in which a hotel is is sexual. But to me, a hotel is so like Hilton Inn and Suites. Like it's like there's a breakfast bar and there are people there for like a Midwestern Sure. You know, conference on human resource technology. But in terms that's exactly of, why it's sexy. Sorry, like go ahead. The se- like, I, I guess I could see it as being sexual in a hookup way because you know you're just like, I'm putting my, <laughs> I'm dropping my stuff off for the night, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm out of here in the morning. No trace, of course. No cleanup, you know. I'm just like I'm hitting and I'm quitting. You know what I mean? It's true. And of course, there's like the stereotype of like. Going there, if you're having an affair, you go to a hotel. If you are with a sex worker, like there there are those kind of sexual, or like a motel is a very like, you know, so-called seedy space. Right. Oh, a hotel is such a beautiful, anonymous, no one, oh, I could be anyone when I'm at the Hilton Inn, a breakfast buffet. Of course. course. Yeah, you know what? You're right. You won me over. But then what I will say is that then maybe a boutique hotel then is like, well, now we're in now it's Pinterest. That's true. Maybe a boutique is less sexual because it's like that's the missing. It's like, yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, why are you here? Why are you boutique? The boutique hotel is more rehab than it is. Yes. Mm. The boutique hotel is more Donald uh, Draper, uh, you know, season seven, you know, Mm -hmm. just it's more retreat than it is like high energy i think the boutique hotel has a more like curated vibe it's rehab but no one has quite decided what they're trying to run away from they're just like literally anything give me anything (laughs) yeah i have a question in your experience with couples coming up to you and um, trying to befriend you where in the boutique hotel would you say it is most likely to happen it's always at the pool yeah, really. And everyone's naked. It's like there's that factor. Like we're wearing our bra and underwear. Per, <laughs> by the way, by yeah. the way, everyone's in underwear. By the way, oh, all these conversations were all in our underwear. By the way, and and a bathing suit is underwear. No, that's mm. you raise such a good point. And not to sound sex negative, but there is something about being in mixed company by a pool where you're like, you shouldn't be able to see me right now. Well, we just needed to, as a society, say bra and underwear equals bathing suit. And swim, sh- like swim trunks equals boxers, and like, let's not. I cannot believe that we in this day and age are still like differentiating, like. Right. So for the purposes of this, it's like I'm in my bra and underwear, like I'm in a <laughs> yeah. bu- and and you're and you're um you know being like is that cedar wood you know like talking about the fucking. <laughs> Oh my god, the lilac's gorgeous. Yeah, this time of year. I can't believe they keep it keep it uh, going out in the desert. Wow, yeah. We're in our bra and underwear. Like it's like that's yeah. that's another factor, you know? It's all happening by the pool. Wow. To desexualize a place like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's cruel. Have you ever been on the other side of this where you think a couple is cool and want to get to know them and want to build a sort of uh, relationship? I have to say no. I have yeah. to say I I I tend to mind my own mind my own self business. <laughs> I mind my own business. Um, not to say that there's anything aggressive about that um, about not doing that and making friends. That's awesome. Um, but like I feel like the times just for me personally at this time in my life, if I am at a hotel, I think it is to escape everything and just to Mm. you know literally read by the pool and you know uh chill and and hang out like i could see that being a thing if like you're there with a group of friends it's like oh that's what this trip is but it's like it's a very like it's a silent area i mean it's truly people are reading they have newspapers they have like the new yorker by the pool like the vibe is is not social whatsoever and i guess you know, I'm, I'm, that's a personal thing for me. I feel like if I am there, I am going to recharge, you know, from being sort of over, from overexerting myself in various sure. ways. If only there was a way to put a do not disturb sign, just kind of hang it on your <laughs> Around ear. Around my neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's like, and I'm fucking so codependent and such a people pleaser, so I will completely you know i will be like okay and now this is and now this is that 100 percent. you know 100 percent. 
Yeah. Also thinking about the pool as a as a space. I there is a stage element of a pool. Mm. Like I hate going to a hotel pool, a straight hotel specifically, because it is like when you walk into the water, everyone is staring at you and they're almost thinking like, "Oh, so he thinks he's good enough to get into the water." Right. Like so he thinks he's good enough to be watched by all of us right. because now I'm going to hear splashing while I'm reading my book and I'm going to have to see who it is. It's you. And he thinks, oh, he deserves attention. Right. And it's almost like there's I, I feel like there's an element of like, is he doing this for him or is he doing this to get attention? The performance yeah. of the pool is absolutely a huge. I mean, the route to get in, how much time someone's swimming laps, like the pool behaviors are definitely something that is performative absolutely the way that you get out you know the insecure moments you know when you're wearing like a bathing suit that's maybe like a little high cut and you're kind of picking a wedgie like all of that (laughs) stuff trying to pull that off gracefully because you are being watched you simply are I mean I'm doing it you're doing it it's just what it is yeah it's a sick sick thing to be really (laughs) it's voyeuristic and it's fucked up and if you're out there and you've been insecure about being in a pool, you're right to be. We all are. You yeah, know? you're being and, stared and, at. <laughs> and I'll go so far as to say, if you feel like, if you yeah, feel you at are. home in a pool and you feel like, oh, this is great, I this is perfect, this is where I fit in, I'm a star. Yeah. You need help. What's it like to be <laughs> fine in the world? What's it like to have no problems? You know. I have been in hotels with pools before, and I love a pool. And I have been like, well, I can't go because I'm alone. And when you're alone at a pool. You look like a pervert. You look like you're there to Absolutely. be weird. <laughs> Absolutely. Clocking in to be weird. Here yeah. at the pool. It's like, oh, who's this absolute psychopath? He's probably, <laughs> you know, jerking it behind that book. Oh, my like... God. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, and in terms of the underwear thing and just the, the kind of uh, raw sexuality of the whole endeavor, the one step above that is also then people are putting um, sunscreen on one another. So not only are you seeing couples, straight couples often oh my God. in their underwear, they are rubbing one another. Oil. <laughs> they, are, they are literally caressing one another uh, front and back. When did we decide that pools were something that were not private? <laughs> <Yeah. You know. laughs> I, just, I sound so prude no 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 but... i love that what what liberal socialist came to our country and made pools on private yeah no it really does feel like it's almost like you know how, it, it feels like leftover from an era from the free love from the free love era <laughs> This is what you get, folks, when you just theorize and keep digging in and digging yeah. in. You find yourself <laughs> a full conservative. I mean, truly, sure, like when you actually when you think about it, you're like, wait, I'm sorry. What 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 is this? Some kind of like, you know, Woodstock, Coachella, Burning Man <laughs> hey, utopia? Guess is everyone what? here polyamorous? <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. Pools. Pools are pools, okay? Let them be uh-huh. that. Let them okay. be the underwear rub down. But let's call it what it is, folks. Yeah. It's that. Yes. It's sexual. The pool is sexual. If you, okay. If Unless you have water polo practice, the pool is sexual, period. Period. So don't try to talk to me. And let me tell you something else. <laughs> if you have water polo practice, often that's also very sexual. Yes. I mean, totally, totally, totally. Yeah. I hate when I'm in the hotel pool and the hotel water polo team rolls up <laughs> and starts practicing. <laughs> the hotel, uh, the Holiday Inn and Suites sharks are here <laughs> to put on a show. <laughs> oh, my God. I do want to tell a quick water polo story. Please. Oh, is, please. Um, in high school, my hot Spanish teacher took us to Spain. Like, she, like, got the school to fund it, basically. And she took us to Spain, and it was awesome. And then to fly home, we took a flight from, like, Spain to Germany and then Germany to L.A. We flo- flew on Lufthansa, and there was, like, a German water polo team on our flight, and it they were all sitting in the back and this was the first time I took Xanax because I was partying with all the older girls on the trip and they were like oh it's literally not a big deal like just take Xanax if you want to fall asleep because the flight was you know 12 15 hours or whatever it is and I took like a fourth of a bar 
and didn't know that you were not supposed to drink like caffeinated tea on it like I didn't really it didn't occur to me that that would keep me awake and not you know I just was not thinking and so I had this like black tea with milk and half a bar and I was literally I had blacked out okay blacked <laughs> the fuck out like this is the only time in my life I've blacked out and my friend basically told me it was like straight out of Bridesmaids, like the scene of Kristen Wiig just being like oh my God. fucked up on the plane. I was singing. <laughs> I was talking to the flight attendants. I was chilling in the back. I literally was like being passed around by the water polo t- players. I'm like in high school. The craziest shit ever. Um, and then just like, you know, the last two hours of the flight falling asleep directly on the person's lap next to me, <laughs> like, like, you know, waking up with like the word, like just sleeping wrong on your neck and just being like, ha, 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 oh, like trying to get your neck straight. Um, and so water polo obviously brings me back to that. Did anyone take a video of you? No, no. Sadly, there's no evidence. Honestly, very wow. respectful of your friends. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was the kind of like, I never got fucked up in high school. Well, I smoked a lot of weed, but I never drank. And I was always like shuttling around like all the hotties to the parties, like all my girlfriends. And so they, uh, I think they let me have it because I was never taking, I was always taking care of them. So really, real, real ones. But um, yeah, water polo <laughs> brings me back. <laughs> Got to have a kind of a bridesmaid. Like, I, I'm always terrified of what would happen if I really was, like, uninhibited in that way. The closest I've come to it, and this is one of the most humiliating things I could possibly say, because it just goes, it, it really is like a harrowing look at my brain. Uh, one time I had very minor surgery and I had, like, brief, yes. uh, what's it called, anesthesia or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the what I woke up saying was literally something that <laughs> along the lines of like, I replied on Twitter. Oh no. Isn't that devastating? No. It, that it's truly so like sad. one of the saddest things I could po- like I could you could possibly imagine. It's that somehow what was in my mind while I was in that state was was like social media. Oh wow that really no. bummed everyone out. And rightfully so. I um, actually have a video of my wisdom teeth anesthesia wear off thing like mourning the loss of my wisdom teeth like like being like you know that state of wisdom teeth like sort of the anesthesia wearing off where you're like the smallest things make you cry like you're just crying over like really nothing and it's devastating it's like I'm just being like they took (laughs) <laughs> like literally they're gone I had four I had four where are they bring them to me like literally like the craziest most devastating that's so funny to be so literal like the thing you're yeah. mourning you're just literally mourning the teeth you're not like thinking about some other like element of your life or you know can I see them like literally <laughs> Do you think wow. the trend of the the an- anesthesia video coming out of wisdom teeth is over? Do you uh, think that was a trend? It was a trend for sure. It's a Everyone trend. wanted to go viral. Yeah, every so often I see it. I haven't seen it in a very long time, but you know, I mean, maybe worth maybe worth revisiting. I maybe I'll like I don't know, maybe I'll send you guys mine. It's pretty Yeah, crazy. we should all get fucked up on whatever they give the wisdom <laughs> to people and then honestly re record this podcast, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Guys, I still have my wisdom teeth. Oh Me my god, too. Drag. Really? Did you ever have braces? Yeah. Yeah, I had braces too. Wait. Interesting. That's crazy. Twins. Is it we is it are we in the minority to not have to have our wisdom teeth? I think you might be. Yeah, I think generally, yeah. The whole wow. thing. I don't think I realized how um, much of a marginalized community I was a part of. <laughs> In my mind, it was always like, oh, 50 50. Yeah, you know what? Worth a look up. Worth, <laughs> yeah, worth definitely. A Let's look that up now. <laughs> how many people have their wisdom teeth? Um, about 20 to 25% of the human population is born with 35 or born without them at all. How many people use them? How many people lose them? <laughs> okay, a song. Literally a song. 
We'll get back to you, folks. It's a nursery rhyme. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're all asleep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, George, we should get our wisdom teeth out together. That could be so fun. I would love that. That would be the ultimate live show. We should get two dentists on stage, and they should move (laughs) our wisdom teeth. Oh, my God. That would actually be amazing, and then yeah, <laughs> we could write it off. We could write it off on our taxes because it was part of our yeah, performance. Yes, finally. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you guys could do the live <laughs> live podcast of you right, on right, anesthesia. Right, yeah. Oh, the, that'd the, be amazing. Uh, they, we they have to wheel us out as we're coming to, and then we have to start talking and doing a live podcast. That's so <laughs> the way in which I'm not even kidding. That's the number one thing I would ever want to see. Oh, it's, it's already going viral. It's, it's going just, viral on Peacock. <laughs> I kind of just want to accompany you to the dentist is what I'm saying, I guess. Yeah. Well, well we're going to need someone to drive. Someone very stoned <laughs> will need to drive us. <laughs> but I'm envisioning you specifically at the Gramercy Theater. Oh, totally. It's going to be a huge oh, crowd. Such a beautiful like, space. Giant. It's a great space. Yeah. Just dark, like dried blood everywhere. Dark, black, cavernous space. Oh my god! Oh, that would be so funny. Shortest show ever. (laughs) (laughs) We would need to have like fourteen opening acts so that it's worth people's time. People keep falling off the stage and then they wheel us back up. Fourteen other people having their wisdom (laughs) teeth. You know how they do like fifty first jokes every year? Someone yes. should do a show that is all comedians who have just had their wisdom <laughs> teeth taken one after the other coming to. Oh I'm almost God. thinking of it as like instead of Divas Live, it's like yeah. Dental <laughs> Patients Live. <laughs> I swear to God. Like, you don't even need to have surgery. You just need to go under and then come back. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. This is huge. I mean, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I do think for the realism, we would need to have surgery. <laughs> You know, I don't think there's any shortcuts in this town. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we have to have surgery. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're and there right. needs to be like gauze in our mouths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow. Wow. Um, <gasps> oh, my goodness. Sam, is this Should we do our final, final segment? segment? I think so. Yeah, can you introduce it because my I'm still concerned about my connection? Sam, is that look toxic? At me. You yeah. I will introduce it because I love you, but your connection is so crisp. It is so perfect. And you have done such a good job this entire episode. I just want to say thank you to both of you for bearing with me. I felt really supported. And in times of need, I felt you waiting and pausing and really involving me in the conversation yeah. despite my difficulties. Despite your... And and I just want to say, I you know, too. there were... I actually felt I, this has been weighing on me because when I would like apologize to Hannah and be like, oh, thank you for being patient. In my mind, I was like, well, I don't want him to think that we're a team and 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 he's on the outside you know i mm. i didn't want you to be it's it, i didn't want you to feel like i'm the dad of the mom apologizing I, for you know I, for her i didn't kid. want you to feel like the guest and not the host exactly mm. exactly mm-hmm. um and yeah. i do want to just sort of break in to say in fact over 90% of americans have their wisdom teeth removed <gasps> While there are some occasions when wisdom teeth surgery isn't necessary, more often than not, it's recommended to prevent additional problems and pain in the future. So oh over ninety percent, you guys are in the ten percent. I can't believe that's that we amazing. Are gay cancers <laughs> who identify as having wisdom teeth. Literally. <laughs> I mean, this Literally. is like Where's parent your trap Where's stuff. Your month? <laughs> this is yeah. true. Yeah. You know who said who said two gay cancers with wisdom <laughs> teeth can't run a podcast. <laughs> Hannah, our final segment is called Shoutouts. And in this segment, we pay homage to the classic straight art form of the radio shoutout. Think TRL in 2002, Carson Daly is there. Think Z100, Z Morning Zoo, and you're calling to potentially say something mildly racist and for the hosts to kind of be like, oh, well, all right, next caller. Uh, (laughs) We are going to shout out something that we're loving these days, something Mm. that we want to shout from the rooftops. This thing is a sleigh. (laughs) Okay. So so and and the the spirit of these is very we think about we think of them on the spot we never prepare them it's very whatever is the first thing that really that you you're saying this makes me happy. Sam, do you I have, have one? one. I actually have one. Go for it. What's up freaks, losers and perverts around the globe? I want to give a huge shout out to the state of Vermont. Woo! I went there last weekend to go to a swimming hole and ooh baby, I 
got it did not have a great time i got into uh me and misha got into a fight uh our airbnb was annoying and yet i left that being like i'm gonna die there that place is so gorgeous vermont is really where it's at talk about lush green i mean have you been there in the summer i'm sure the winters are bad but i don't know that i've never been there we're buying a house there yesterday bitch um jk um but that would also be a sleigh i wish it were closer to new york city why don't they have lush green places right next to new york city i would love that and i think my friends would as well build them uh whoever's mayor xoxo eric adams bye <laughs> Woo! Oh, shout out to and you guys if you're in line in 2020 to vote vote Bernie Sanders please do <laughs> we still have a chance <laughs> yeah we still have a chance I'm surprised line. you didn't mention him in your Vermont shout out <laughs> oh my god he's Vermont no wonder I felt such a strong connection I to, to it say, oh I, I my kept god waiting for it but you chose to be apolitical and Be and Ben and Jerry's right <laughs> and Ben and Jerry's of and course. Ben and Jerry's no, it really is. It's like rural, but with a hippie energy in a way that I was like, wait, not fair. You can have like yeah. countryside without being Republican. This is yeah. huge. Yeah. Well, it can be. Uh, there's a libertarian bent. Mm. Mm. What you want is Seattle. Is that true, though? Seattle, gorgeous nature, a lot of trees, forest vibes, yet incredible city. Mm -hmm. Very queer. Very cool. Lefty. Yeah. Amazon HQ is there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I can shop in person. So you can shop yeah. in person. Yeah, they locker, have a, they have a gorgeous storefront. Um, <laughs> and you can go and you can actually see the people there uh, pick things up, you know, and, and kind of pee in little diapers. And you yeah. can say, oh, this is culture. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot about that. Um, Classic. Okay. Well, without further ado, it's my turn. <laughs> go for it, Georgina. Go. Um, okay. What's up, boys and girls and everybody else back home? I want to give a shout out to uh, wearing a t-shirt with a blazer. Now, this is something that for many years I thought, this is kind of, uh, you know, it's it's kind of giving Jeremy Piven in Entourage. There's something gigolo about it. There's something that is tacky, you know, a graphic tee with a blazer. I don't know. It's not for me. I feel like it's very... Um, it's very Hollywood, parentheses, derogatory. But recently I have started wearing a white t-shirt with a blazer. And let me tell you something, I've never felt more sophisticated. I've never felt more like a like an artistic urbanite. I've never felt more both Brooklyn and Manhattan at the same time. It is, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. If you're unsure of a dress code and you don't know if it's collar or if it's no collar, wear a t-shirt with a blazer. And so that's that for me. Woo! Um, that's huge. I think yeah. that is one of those things that is kind of chic because it has been so maligned. Well, you just you need to go simple because it's still I do still think wearing a graphic tee with a blazer. Not good. No, I think that a T-shirt with a blazer also goes to the realm of suit with nice leather con like sneakers. Yes. Which I also like. And I think that we can put that in a group. Um, mm. And I think it is sort of our generation's take on the suit. And I think we can own that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, That's huge. our generation invented wearing a t-shirt with a blazer. Correct. <laughs> and so for anyone up. out there yeah. judging us for eating our avocado toasts and not having mortgages, I don't see you reinventing fashion. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hannah, it's your turn whenever you are ready. Okay. Oh my god, I can't believe I got on. Um, thank you so... Oh my god, this is crazy! Amanda, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Bitch. Um, so... <laughs> So I want to just give a shout out to Kinder the Chocolate, mm. um, which is uh, a, an Italian chocolate that they sell at the gas station by my house. And I just want to say that I recently found out that in America, chocolate um, doesn't actually legally have to be uh, have c cacao in it anymore. Um, it doesn't actually have to legally be chocolate. Um, Hershey's chocolate is not actually technically chocolate. It's a like chocolate um, adjacent dessert. And so like I just had Kinder recently from the gas station by my house and they have it and um i think it's awesome it doesn't make my stomach hurt and it gives me it's like more it's better so um i just wanted to say um shout out to that to kinder 
Woo! Oh, I love a kinder. Beautiful. Doesn't Kinder have like the funny little picture of a boy? Yeah. Is that Kinder? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the I've and never the little things inside the eggs. Yeah, Kinder mm. surprise. And you know, sometimes you'll find maybe at, at an artisanal ice cream shop spelled with two P's and an E, you might find <laughs> uh, a Kinder flavored ice cream, and that Ooh. can be a huge sleigh as well. Cute. Wow, George, you're going to boutique ice cream places that I oh, have never stepped foot in. These this, these places are so boutique. It's just me and a single Italian gelato maker. Yes. <laughs> these are so VIP. This, it's so VIP. <laughs> um, Hannah, uh, this has been an absolute joy. Yeah, Hannah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. What oh a my treat. God. Any any time, any day. It's 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 an absolute dream. You know, we used to have as a rule that we um intentionally never promoted anything our guests did to punish them for coming on the podcast but Love. we've recently changed that so i would like to give you the space to, to, to promote um any of your work that you would like to i would just like to come on here and promote friendship mm -hmm. the mm. idea of friendship kindness yeah. pass it mm. on that's an order yes that's an order Woo. pass it on or get locked up Unless you are approaching someone at a pool. In in that mm, case, yeah. keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something yeah. we can all live by. And you know what? Sam, I'll say this. You are frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hearing it is, it is. <laughs> I'm hearing your audio, but you're so funny. frozen. is so <laughs> Wow. Can you take a picture of the bro? I do. We need to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. The <laughs> face you're making is so cute. <laughs> oh, it's my God. Cute. Can you still not hear me at all? <laughs> we can't. No, we, we can, can hear you. We you're, can hear you the whole time. haven't moved in approximately a minute thing. and a half. <laughs> oh, Wait, my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there he is. Sam, that's how you've looked like for the past two minutes. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> still, you're still frozen. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. And and we're keeping all this in by the way. No, no, no.